Hello Rocket Builders! So the last time we talked about the command module, how that was designed using FreeCAD and printed using 3D printing. Um, in this module we're going to talk about the related piece which is the launch escape system which is the very front end of our Saturn 1B rocket. So stay tuned, lots of fun ahead! Remember folks, I've been certified to build and fly rockets up to level 3. If you don't have these qualifications, you might want to consider a simpler project and perhaps join one of your local or national organizations. Rocketry is a very safe hobby if you follow some very simple guidelines. Okay, so the launch escape system we talked about last time, it is used in the event of emergency, in the event of a catastrophic failure of the launch vehicle, to safely remove the command module and the astronauts inside away from a rocket undergoing um, a rapid unscheduled disassembly as uh, Mr. Musk at SpaceX likes to refer to it. Um, so this will allow them to escape from the vehicle safely. Okay, um, It performs a few other functions uh, than that too as well. It's actually uh, integrally tied to the guidance system and we'll talk about that in a few moments. Um, so you can see it here in this diagram. It is attached to uh, the command module or as I mentioned in the last video what is actually the boost protective cover. A cover that is used to protect the command module during launch but which gets removed after uh, the vehicle has successfully achieved flight. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to work our way from the front or the very tip of the launch escape system and what's known as a cue ball down to the base which is the tower and we're going to look at each of the pieces um, all of the quirks about them and how we made them okay so this is the very front and you can see it actually looks like a nose cone itself uh, this is commonly referred to as the cue ball now this isn't just for escape as I alluded to previously uh, this is actually used for uh, guidance as well. Now the way it does that there are um, some atmospheric pressure sensors right at the very tip. Now in um, technical terms atmospheric pressure is referred to as Q. When it reaches its maximum it's max Q which is one of the events they typically call out during a flight launch. Um, but what it does is it has four different pressure sensors and by measuring small differences along a given axis, you can tell if the rocket is moving off center. So that actually fed back all the way down to the gimbaled engines at the very base of the rocket to ensure you had a stable flight. It was also covered prior to launch, so you didn't get things like uh, wasps building a nest inside the sensor and throwing the measurements off, causing the rocket to uh, flip unstably. Um, so that was a very important piece of, uh, of pre-flight uh, protection. Okay, so the cue ball had those sensors. That's how it got its name. Uh, but it also had a few other things. So if you look at the details here, you can see that there are some seams along here. And what these are, there's actually two of them. Okay, one on either side. And those are known as canards. And what would happen is, as the um, cue ball was ejected off the front of the rocket, they would flip open and tilt. And that would allow the uh, capsule to fly sideways away from the rocket. And in this portion here, there was also a small rocket motor, which would give it that additional boost away from a potentially exploding uh, Saturn 1B. Okay. So this was actually a bit of a, an interesting detail to model. Now I had to do this in two pieces, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the, one of the pieces so that you can see. Okay. So the first thing I did was I just drew a nice simple nose cone. Now I did this very similar to how I drew the, um, uh, the capsule for the command module. So if we open up the sketch. Okay, you can see it is the, um, uh, the item in profile. 
Now this is a hollow nose cone with a hole in the base and that is used to connect the sections with uh, uh, pieces I will show you on the following um, uh, parts of the um, launch escape system. Okay. So again, I rotated that through 360 degrees and I deselected my model. So let's go back and look at that again. Okay, so there I have the basic uh, nose cone. Now, to add the canard details, I actually did that a little bit separately. Okay, so I'll remove the nose from this now. And what I did to build this up was very similar. Okay, I started with some revolutions. Okay, and start removing pieces. Okay, so then I had a framework for the details around that cue ball. And then with the two pieces together, okay, so if I bring back the nose, uh, you can't see it here because I've actually deleted it so, so I could show you the uh, pieces. But what I did was I took the solid nose and subtracted the solid uh, detail of the canards and that left the uh, indent of the canards in the nose and that got me my details and it turned out quite well. Um, that took a little while to draw correctly though. Uh, there was definitely some trial and error involved here. Uh, but that's the general technique. Okay, so moving down we have, I called it the booster here, um, but they actually refer to this as the jettison motor. So after launch when everything is going correctly uh, the entire launch escape system with the boost protective cover, but without the command module, lifts up, flies sideways, gets out of the way so that the Saturn 1B can go up into orbit. And that's what these are. Now this is one of uh, the areas where the modeling is actually a little bit disappointing. Um, so I found nice diagrams that showed the rocket nozzles and how it went up inside and, and I modeled all that. And then I looked at the pictures and realized you don't actually see that on the rocket. What you see is a fiberglass cover that gets blown away when um, the motor actually fires. So all those uh, details for the nozzle I had to remove and just put a cover into place. Now it's still kind of interesting in that I had to do that with some um, angled cones so that I could get the proper eccentric shape uh, for um, the nozzle cover. Um, but it doesn't look as nice as the other one did. Now, if you look at the front of this, you will see that there is a post. And that post fits into the hole that I mentioned in the cue ball. And that's kind of how we attach the pieces going down through. If I flip this around, you can see that there's another hole that will allow us to put in the next section. Okay, so that part's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, let's close this. And let's close the cue ball. Okay, so the next section is the uh, actual ejection motor. So this is a very large motor that um, fires in the event of emergency that is capable of carrying not just the launch escape system and the boost protective cover, but also the command module with the astronauts inside. So there's a very large rocket motor. Now that motor shares uh, four nozzles. So it looks like four rockets coming out the base, but it's actually just one with four nozzles. Okay, so um, what I'm showing here is actually the base of that motor. Uh, there is a whole section going up above. Uh, for this one, I didn't print it in plastic because a Apogee Components 29 millimeter uh, body tube, paper body tube, like you make your small rockets from, uh, is the perfect size. So I just use that. Now let's open another piece that I'm not showing here. Uh, that's the shoulder. Okay. So this one got printed out uh, as a couple of pieces. Let's uh, look around. So it's just a post. Okay. And that fit perfectly inside the 29 millimeter bo uh, body tube. Again, I made sure I prototyped and test fitted and so on. Uh, so that would be glued with CA glue inside the uh, body tube 
and then CA glued on either end to either the uh, ejection motor at the top or the uh, nozzle base at the uh, bottom. Okay, so you can see, oops, it fits in here. Now, if I turn this over, you can see that there are four holes in the base. Okay, and that's where the nozzles are going to go. Let's move that into the center. Okay, you can also see the four holes for the launch escape system. And uh, the posts for those are actually going to extend all the way through and be trimmed down with an X-Acto knife um, for final uh, finishing. Now the nozzles themselves. Okay, so again, very similar to the nozzles on the uh, ejection motor. Uh, they're covered, so all the details I had for an actual nozzle I had to fill in. Um, these have posts at the top which um, allow it to be glued into the, uh, the base that we just saw. Okay, now comes the fun one, the tower. Okay, so this one has some interesting details that make it extremely difficult to model. Okay, so all of the tower legs are slanted. Okay, and that may not sound uh, like that big a deal, but it really is because you're drawing in a single plane. So what you want, you can't just draw in an X and Y plane. Uh, you're actually drawing in a slanted plane on both sides, on, on all four sides actually. Okay, so that's one of the difficulties. Now the various struts going across, um, if you're drawing it in a single plane, those are actually pretty simple. But these ones, they're going in as well in a different plane to this donut shaped ring in the middle. Now, I don't know for sure, I assume that's for uh, torsional stresses as the launch escape system tries to twist, uh, but whatever it's for, it's very difficult to model. Now, we also have these posts at the very top which fit into the base of the uh, ejection motor that uh, I showed you previously. Okay, so drawing this by hand is prohibitively difficult. So I took another approach. One of the nice things about FreeCAD is it is all Python based. You can actually draw everything using Python function calls. So for the tower, I did. Uh, this allowed me to calculate angles uh, and so on. So um, being a Python programmer, this was actually uh, a pretty trivial thing for me. The hard part was figuring out the math, which isn't that hard, and um, the coding was actually pretty simple. This may be a little more challenging for someone who isn't a programmer, though, uh, but uh, uh, it works quite well for this particular structure. And of course, you, the viewer, have the advantage that uh, I've already done this for you. So at the top, I've tried to make this uh, pretty general. Um, so one of the things uh, that I have is some of the uh, heights. Now internally, FreeCAD is uh, using millimeters as the dimension, uh, but uh, certainly with the uh, Saturn and Apollo era, everything was not done in metric. Uh, so the measurements are not metric. I have a, a macro defined here called two millimeter. So I put in the measurements in inches and it converts it to millimeters. So these are all parameterized. You set the tire, tower height, the base semi-span, the top semi-span, and so on. And you can um, get all these measurements from the standard diagrams. These are correct for my scale. Um, again, you can either scale it yourself, or if you're doing 3D printing, you can have your uh, 3D printing software scale it to whatever ratio is correct. Now I have added this one other uh, function called robustness. And this allows you to create the supports slightly oversized. Uh, so this is 3D printed plastic. Um, certainly when I was writing the macro, I wasn't sure what the weights on top were going to be and, and how stable it was going to be. It turned out not to be too bad, but this would allow me to make it uh, just a little bit thicker in the radiuses of the uh, pipes if, if that was required. Uh, I wound up printing it just a one-to-one -one scale, so that worked out pretty well. Um, 
again, this was not an overnight thing. Uh, I actually do intend to add some more details to this. For example, there are some steps on the tower legs for uh, service personnel. I wouldn't want to be the guy 300 feet off the ground stepping on it, but um, there were uh, there was that option. Um, yeah, so I still want to add a few more details to this, but as with all of my models, it is freely available both as the macro and as the finished diagram that you see here. So when I uh, finished this, it had to be assembled. It was uh, glued in place using CA glue. At one point, um, I think it was my cat that knocked it over and um, it did come apart. The part that came apart was actually where um, the uh, paper body tube was glued on to uh, one of the sections. So all the, the end pieces were okay, all the plastic pieces. I would have thought the, uh, the launch tower would have broken, but uh, no, it was a separation at the CA glue joint. Um, I'm not a big fan of CA glue because I do find that tends to happen a lot, but maybe that's just me and how I'm applying it. I don't know, but uh, CA has not been my best friend unless I'm trying to glue fingers together, in which case it works fine. Um, one of the nice things about this is um, if I do have a hard landing, um, and I expect that's going to happen at some point if I fly it more than once, I've only flown it once, so I hope to fly it more than once, um, then yeah, I can reprint pieces and just replace them. Uh, that's the nice thing about 3D printing. It's uh, low volume manufacturing and I can do that. Uh, we have the same issues we had that I mentioned with the command modules printed in uh, PLA, which is um, not got a good uh, glass temperature, which means it can melt if it's out in the sun for too long or like in the back seat of your car with the sun coming in through, through the window and things like that. I've not had that issue with this yet, but uh, you know, I, with the right conditions, that could easily happen. Um, also, the ABS is just something that uh, I think might glue better, be a little bit stronger. Um, this, these parts aren't going to be painted because I'm printing them in white, but uh, certainly, like the paper body tube, will be painted and so on. So, uh, I like the option of uh, being able to do some painting to it. Again, I haven't tried it. I don't know how well it works at, at this point. So, the launch escape system. If you're trying to make this by hand, and others have, so if you look at Max Q's build, um, he had a pretty ingenious way for making this tower, and it worked quite well for him. But uh, um, I have very large, fat fingers that shake a lot, so I don't trust myself for detailed modeling like that, especially when I can do it like this. Uh, but I think, all told, he spent less time on it than I did. Um, so, uh, many options. This is just another one. Now, the other thing to consider, too, both for the command module and for the launch escape system, is 3D printed plastic is heavy. Okay? Now, in my case, I had to add a lot of nose weight to my Saturn 1B anyway. Um, and um, with a 75 millimeter motor, Weight wasn't a super big option. If worse came to worse, I could always add a, uh, use a bigger motor. But uh, certainly for smaller models, you might want to factor that in there because it, it does weigh more than you might expect. It's certainly not like balsa and paper. Okay, so bear that in mind as you're using 3D printed parts. Again, I had to ship uh, this out for printing because um, I was having issues with my printer at the time, which I still haven't fully resolved. Um, so bear that in mind too if you're new to 3D printing. Um, but yeah, I'm optimistic I'll, I'll get this working at some point. Okay, so that's it. If you uh, like what you see here, uh, definitely subscribe, especially if you want to see more like this. Uh, we do have some more in the Saturn 1B series. And remember, you haven't even seen me in the shop yet, so uh, <laughs> there's a lot more to follow. So like, subscribe, and until next time, have fun building and have more fun flying. Talk to you later.